I want to start this video with a demonstration of the system. I will reset the power bank that it's connected to. And now, this is an ESP32 cam. This is an ESP32 that's connected to an LCD, to a round LCD screen. And now, let's take a photo. As you can see, the cube is here. Now the idea for this system came from me doing a review on this screen. I originally had it connected to um, uh, a Nano and I've been asked a lot of first how to connect it to an ESP and also how to show images and that made me go and look into putting images on the screen which is considerably easy and there are several examples in the library. And then I ran into the ESP32 that was lying around in my closet around other projects and then it all clicked together and I was like I gotta mix them together and this is what I did so now let, let's review a little bit the hardware especially this setup and then I'll show you some code and then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with it which I think is really really cool let's start with ESP32 in order to program ESP32 you need some form of a USB to UART and this one is an FTDI now it's a pain in the ass with all the cables a thing. So eventually what I did is I built this board. Uh, the FDI goes in here. There's a jumper here because you need to connect GPIO 0 to ground in order to put the ESP32 in programming mode. And there is a reset here. I wish they would have given a reset in one of the pinouts. That would be so much easier than just trying to figure out what the reset in here. You can also undo the power, but it's it's not that easy. Now I'll pull this one out, and you can see using the RX and TX, uh, five volt ground, and this is a GPIO zero. The reason for the pull up here is for the pressing button. There is no other available GPIO on the ESP32 without soldering or doing other tricks. So I figured out I can use the RX since I wanted to, t to keep the TX out so I can actually hear uh, debug from this. Um, and when I started it the first time when I wanted to make this video, I'll put a clip of it in the end, I, it started all going nuts because it didn't have a pull up and it was getting information through the serial. So when this boot, and I'll go over this in the code, uh, it checks if there is a serial communication, actual data coming in. If not, it allows you to use the button for creating the image. And this one is just a, a, a socket for USB. Um, it's a breakout and I use just pins to the level of the board to make it as close to the board as possible. Now the other ESP32 is connected to the screen. It uses all the SPI pin. Uh, it's a it's a one direction, so it only has a D in, so it's only the MOSI has been used here, and there's several other pins. They're all mapped out in the code, and I'll go over it. And if you wanna know how to use it and all, you can see my other video. I'll put a link in the description and on the screen. Now, in order to explain the code, I'm gonna go over each of the section. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with how to show an image on the screen from the ESP32. And then I'll show you how to take a photo with the ESP32 camera. Then I'm going to explain the ESP Now, how to connect the two ESPs together over the ESP Now network. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you what I've done with those two parts with the ESP Now and made it into two units that can send an image one to the other. The file is on the screen, that's on the screen is the example for all the file, example, the Arduino library, image viewer, and that's the JPEG. Now, it's a very well explained, there's a lot of instructions here of how to do things, how to get the upload tool, I'll talk about it in a second. Now, a few things here. For example, if you need to know the pinouts, here is the list of the pinouts, and the other pins that are missing here is, of course, the SPI, and you can find them in any um, Google, quick Google search. Now, one thing that I do have to do is to change this into this because this is not the driver I have. I have the GC9A01. This is one change that I had to do. The second change that I had to do is I've tried um, 
few of the new method of storing like the FF fat and the little FS and I've been using spiffs for a long time and it's working well for me so I'm gonna keep it with it. So I need to make a few adjustments. The first adjustment you need to do is inside of here is that we don't want this to start, we want the spiffs to start and then um, it's here, we don't give it the end FF, we actually do that with the spiffs and that's all that's all the changes you need to do <clears throat> you can upload the code and one important thing here there's an explanation of how to install the tool which is um, sorry this one and i've already have it installed so if i go to tools and i go to esp32 sketch data upload this is how i upload the data that is the jpeg and now a really uh, cool shortcut to know is Control and K. Control and K will open the folder of this example of where the file is. It will open the folder. And as you can see, there is a data folder here, and there is an image here. So when you're using the tool and upload the data, you're basically pushing the data from the folder data inside of your project into the spiffs of the ESP32. Now this is for how to show an image on the screen. Now, for the camera, I found this really cool um, example from Random Nerd Tutorials, which is an excellent site, by the way, of a uh, ASP32 camera that goes into deep sleeps, wake up every four seconds and take a photo. Now, the only thing I really care about here is how we set up the camera and how we gain the buffer of an image from the camera. So, the settings starts here, and you can see them going into a config right here. And then it all just gets um, activated, the SD as well, takes the camera into the SD. This is the buffer, and this is how we gain the data from the buffer. Now, if the buffer is empty, it will say the camera capture failed. Now, remember, if you want to upload a code into the ESP32 camera, you have to uh, show GPIO0 into ground before the power on or short it and then press the reset. So the MCU will load when the GPIO zero is already shortened and that will put it into uh, programming mode. Now let's talk ESP now. ESP now is basically the ESP utilizing the already existing Wi-Fi module to communicate between two ESPs instead of communicating <coughs> through a router. Now, you already do that if you ever set up uh, an access point on the ESP32 and, and got a web server on it, but you basically did the same thing. So the ESP, th uh, the ESP now has created a framework that allows us easily to create a master and slave and other typographies as well, but I, I stayed with the master and slave that will communicate one to the other. Uh, the flow is the master will send an information to the slave. Now. Let's go over the code. Let's start with the easy part, which is the slave. And I'm not going to go over everything. I'm just going to go over the important one, which is, which is this one. When you receive the data, and this is registered here, you can see ESP now register, receive a callback, and it received this one. And when you receive an information, <clears throat> sorry, it will create the text that will show the information that arrived, where it arrived from, and show that on the screen. Now let's go to the master. And these two examples, these two examples exist within the ESP32, ESP now examples. You have the basic master and slave. Now the master is a bit more complicated. Uh, it does the initiation of the ESP now. And you have a scan for uh, for looking for uh, for a slave, and it shows you if it found it, connects to it, and you got the manage to slave and here you got information as well on the send data and on that send on the return of the callback and this will be important later on the return of the callback and you have to set up you can see the on that send it received now those two uh, callbacks are important to make sure that the data that was sent from the master is actually received on the slave uh, in the right way and it will confirm it to each other and this helps us when you want to send information and it fails. And I'll show you what I've done in my code when I've sent the image. So this is about the ESP now. Now to the code of the example. Same as the topography of master and slave. I've taken the master as the camera since only the master can send information to the slave. 
So I have to take the, the photo and send it to the screen. So I'm not going to go over the settings which we got over before. We have a setup. Now remember I told you before that um, I wait to see if there is a connection to the UART to know if to communicate with the bot through UART or using the button of the press. So this is where it's done. And you can see now if we do not use the, the RX, we do a pull up to the pin that is on the board and we uh, initiate the ASP now and we register the on data sender that we showed you before. Now in the loop, if we're um, not using the RX and we're not paired and the last attempt that we tried to connect to a slave as, as gun, meaning it's, it's lower than the current millis, we try again. Now, if we succeeded on pair, we'll blink twice. If we failed, we'll blink three times and we double the next connect attempt for uh, uh, gap. So, meaning if we waited one second in the beginning, then we wait two seconds until we try again, four seconds, and so on. If we're um, not connected, we're not using uh, the RX sticks and we get pulled uh, by the RX pin, we take the next photo flag, sorry, we set the flag of next, take next photo to one. Now, if we send next package flag is on, we send the next package, I'll, I'll cover this in a second. If the flag that uh, says take next photo flag is set on, we take a photo. Uh, now there is the serial, so if we're using a, a serial, you can see here, this is how you take a photo, uh, this is how you scan for a slave, and this is how you start a transmit. Now this is take a photo. Take a photo does exactly as I showed you in the photo example, and save this eventually into a file. Now if we are purred, if we are purred to another, uh, uh, to the slave, we start transmit. Um, I'll, I'll, look for start transmit, this is start transmit. What we do is we read the file <clears throat> from it to get its size. Then we have, in ESP now, you can only pass a 250 uh, bytes transmit each time. That means I had to cut down uh, the file into segments of 200. If I'm not mistaken, I use 240. We'll look at the file, we'll look at the value in a second. Now, uh, I had to Calculate how many packages, so meaning how many transmits I'm going to have. And this is done by the file size um, uh, divided by the uh, file data uh, uh, message and then sealing it up. So we know, uh, because if we'll do it in, sometimes it will go like you will have 3.2, it will show you 3 instead of 4 because you're going to have act actually 4. Now we need to send a message. You can only send bytes. And since the total amount of packages could have been more than 255, which is the limit of a byte, I had to cut it into two segments. So here I'm moving it eight, um, eight binary to the right, meaning I'm taking the, the, the second byte and placing it here as the first byte, and then I'm taking a byte out of this, meaning I'm taking the first byte. Um, and then I send the message with a zero one. I'll go over it and when I get to the slave, what I do with this. Now remember the next package from before. So the next package says that if we are in the same position, if we got to the last package, we're actually resetting it and we're done submitting the file. If not, we read the file. And the important thing is that we skip within that file. As you can see, we do sick. We get a current uh, um, uh, position, double the file that are in message, and we get a transmission current position. We move it to the next one. We, we put it in the first two bytes, which is the current position, so the add to the slave will know. And then we just file read into message array from the, from the third one. We read it with I. Uh, the first value is O2, so we know we're actually getting a data. And again, when I get to the slave, I'll show you. And then I just send the data. Now, in send data, we know um, uh, what's the result that we get. And um, as you can see, on data sent, meaning that when we send the data, we get a callback. If we are in the current uh, transmit to total packages, meaning if we have a packages to send right now, 
we do the send next <coughs> package flag equals one. Now, if the ESP now send is not success, we move the current position back. And the reason for that is that we will send again the same uh, package that we failed to send before. Now the rest is well, it's the same as initiate ESP now, there's scan and connect to slave, which we show in the other examples. Now let's go to the slave. The slave starts with uh, initiating it with a screen, so everything we showed in the example of the screen exists here, including the initiate here, and we're using uh, spiffs. Now you can see we have the core transmission position and total packages. Now, what's really important here is this part, the callback on data receive. Remember the zero one? one So that says the standard transmission, we get store current position is zero, we haven't started yet, and we rebuild the data. Remember, we had it before, we build the data, we take the data and move it eight to the left, so it will match the second byte. We do a plus plus, meaning to that that pointer is actually the second uh, data byte, and we add them together. And this is the total packages, and we remove, I call it moon, it was just the example, and I never change it. We remove this, we remove this uh, image so we can write a new one. Now, if we get zero two, which we showed before, we now edit the current, we get the current uh, uh, position, we, we connect it together, we seek, we open the, the file, and then we write, we append on it, we actually using, opening it as file append, and we append all the data into it, and then we close the file. Now, if the current position is the last position, we, we set the flag of show image into one, and we set a done transfer, we, we open it, uh, and we print, and we save all the, uh, save the size and file close. That was just for, for me to test it's actually arrived. Now, show image, I'm sorry, this is in the loop. Show image, if show image is one, which we saw before, we reset it, and then we fill the screen and basically just reading the file we just saved, and showing it on the screen. So this is basically all the code and this is how it works. As I mentioned in the beginning, I had a crazy idea and my crazy idea was to have them connected serially one to another. And I thought I'll be able to run the image way faster and then maybe get some form of a video or, or a stream of JPEGs to the screen. Oh God, I was wrong. So <laughs> let me demonstrate for a second. And we're still waiting and waiting. And there you go. This is the image. So it didn't work well. The idea was great. I, I guess the uh, uh, two gigabytes um, that has been sent over the ESP now is way faster than the serial. Um, and also probably since it's on the same thing, there's, there's no delay of actually sending it to the buffer of the, the serial. So yeah, I think my crazy idea will just won't happen. Um, if you have any ideas of what to do with it, I'm, uh, I've seen something about streaming out of the camera. I'm going to look into that and see what I can come up with. And uh, now for bloopers. Now, I want to plug this to the power. Just plugging its USB to uh, the power you can see. It's connected to the same power bank. Now let's wait for this to blink twice. That was a twice. And now we're. This is when I figure out something is not okay, and as I mentioned, it was the pull up for the button. Now, I hope you enjoyed the content. It was a lot of technical information. If you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or just give me a comment. See you next time.